Good morning, pilgrims and busy gringos. It is day two on the Camino de Santiago. It's 7.30 in the morning. I'm here at the Citadela in Pamplona. Woke up this morning like at 5.30 because that's when all the pilgrims decided to wake up, but I wasn't gonna leave that early. Actually, I'd rather start walking when the sun comes out so that I can start filming. But 7.30 is fine. I still have to have breakfast. I'm gonna have it at the same place where I had it last time around on my way out of town. Today we have like a 40 kilometer day to Estela and we have a lot to the Perdón up ahead which will be the major climb of the day and then the descent into uh, Puente La Reina. Of course the bike trail I think avoids the Alto de Perdón and I think it's that descent through the rocky fields that uh, I may have to get off the bicycle but who cares. Let's get day two started guys. Let's go for it. The city gradually morphs into the suburbs and eventually the landscape opens up into vast agricultural fields hidden by a dense blanket of fog. Although I've covered this stretch twice before, this time it feels entirely different. Instead of being surrounded by hikers, I find myself traveling with a group of Colombian cyclists on our way to El Alto del Perdón. Wow. I've come to rely on the belt and my calls of Buen Camino or Bici, which is short for bicycle in Spanish, to alert hikers of my presence. Very foggy morning today. I have never seen the Camino like this, not this section. It's funny that when you're walking, all you see are pilgrims, and when you're on a bicycle, all you see are the Bici Grinos. <laughs> Climbing to El Alto Perdón, and I can't see a thing. I love the Camino, man. I love it in all the shapes and forms and weather patterns. My lips are numb right now. Yeah. <laughs> Reaching El Alto del Perdón on foot or by bike is an exhilarating experience. As the ascent can be challenging, but the stunning panoramic view of the surrounding landscape makes the journey worthwhile. As you make your way up the winding path, you will pass by the iconic metal sculpture of medieval pilgrims created by the Spanish artist Vicente Galbete in 1996. The monument provides a peaceful spot for pilgrims to reflect on their journey. I suggest you take a well-deserved break to catch your breath before the descent. Well, after that tough initial climb, we finally made it to El Alto del Perdón and we have majestic views above the clouds in every direction. We can see over here on this side where we're heading, Puente La Reina and beyond. Made it up here with only one bar of my battery, which I was kind of scared that I was going to run out before uh, making it today's uh, destination, which is going to be like a 40 kilometer day, uh, but no worries. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about the e-bike that I'm using. It is a German bicycle high bike with a 625 something something battery and a Bosch motor. Excellent bicycle. I mean, I don't have anything to compare it to because uh, it is the first time that I use one. But so far it seems to be doing the, the job. <sighs> I rented it from uh, bcgrino.com. Hands free. I did everything online. And then when I got to St. John Pierre de Port, the bicycle was waiting for me there at the store. While I was there at the bike shop, I met a Cuban pilgrim that lives here in Spain. Uh, when I was listening to him talking to another guy, I'm like, this accent sounds familiar. It's mild, but I know that he's still there. So we talked for a while as I was setting up all the accessories that I brought along. I brought the front pouch on the bicycle where I keep all my electronics. The best thing about it is all I have to do is press a button and it comes off. So I always take it with me when I go into cafes and bars and such, or when I'm walking around town, it also has a strap that I can put over my shoulder. I have the one where I keep my phone and a bell. The bell that I brought is the loudest. The bike already had two, one is not working. And then behind, just below where I sit, is another one where I keep the tripod and I have the flashing light. I have those two huge bags that came with a bicycle 
that hold about 40 liters, so just enough space to keep all my belongings in there. Overall, I think the bicycle weighs around 25 kilos or so, and I brought about 25 pounds. <laughs> Do the math. The additional Stone Circle Monument at El Alto del Perdón was inaugurated in 2017 to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the Camino de Santiago being declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I was confronted with a steep downhill path full of loose volcanic rocks, making it a challenging section of the Camino to navigate by bike. Despite the difficulty, I managed to ride the brakes all the way down to the bottom where my spirit soared as I caught sights of a beautiful virgin statue. As I make my way through the peaceful streets of Uterga, I pass by a charming water fountain, a church, city hall and the only pilgrim restaurant in town. One of the things I love about the Camino is how it seamlessly transitions from paved roads to dirt paths as it winds out of small towns and villages. It is at the town of Murruzabal where I decided to take a 3.7 kilometer alternative route to visit the Romanesque Church of Santa Maria de Unati. This 12th century church is renowned for its distinctive octagonal shape, which blends Christian and Islamic architectural styles, possibly inspired by the Church of the Holy Sepulchro in Jerusalem. Pilgrims are offered a special discount to visit the cloister, which features 33 columns, believed to represent the age of Christ at the time of his crucifixion. After a short visit, I resume my journey on my way back to the Camino, passing through cornfields and rolling hills for the remaining 5 kilometers until I reach a pilgrim statue that welcomed me to Puente la Reina. After a quick uh, tour of uh, Santa Maria de Unate, a detour that I took uh, last time around, I made it here to Puente la Reina, another emblematic and beautiful bridge of the Camino Frances, one of the landmarks. 11 o'clock in the morning, I already had my brunch, you might say. I was in search of uh, orange juice, but they didn't have it. So instead I had a coffee with milk and a couple of uh, ham and cheese uh, croquetas. This would be the halfway point of the day. If you're walking, usually pilgrims stay in this town, which I highly recommend because you got the beautiful landmark and a couple of churches got a stamp in one of them. So I'm gonna continue on to Estella and I still haven't even used half of uh, my battery, which is great news, so I don't have to worry about. We did most of the climbing, so now I think if, if I remember correctly, it's just up and down for the remaining of the day. Let's go for it. Puente la Reina is famous for the Puente Romanico, a bridge constructed in the 11th century by order of Queen Doña Mayor over the Arga River, the same river we've been following since the town of Subiri and we last saw this morning leaving Pamplona. Originally featuring six arches, one was destroyed during the Spanish Civil War. Buen camino. It doesn't take long to catch up to the tail end of the pilgrims who departed Puente la Reina later this morning. I flew past dry fields that were harvested over the summer. You can tell the winter months are drawing near. The origins of the village of Sirreauki date back to the medieval times. The village is home to some of the oldest buildings in the area, with structures from the 16th and 17th centuries. Like many other towns along the Camino, Sirreauki serves as a resting place for tired pilgrims on their journey. The second half of the stage is going amazingly well. Seeing less and less pilgrims, because of course the ones that started in uh, Puente la Reina are getting closer to Estrella, Estella, where I'm heading right now. And uh, check out this uh, Roman bridge. Incredible, the ruins of it, whatever remains, and that's 
One of the things that I love so much about the Camino Frances is all the history that you come across here at every turn, at every corner, like this town, Siriauki, that we just uh, passed by. When you see it for the first time, it catches your eyes because it's sitting all the way at the top of uh, this hill in incredible view. And uh, if you can stay there, I highly recommend it. I have to do it in one of my upcoming uh, trips. But for now, let's just enjoy the second half of the stage. The sun came out, temperatures are rising, the landscape is changing. Are you noticing a change in the Camino? Still a little bit cold, which is, uh, I love it. I'd rather walk in the cold temperatures than in the summer. I've been here in the summer through the middle of uh, some massive heat waves. I don't recommend it, at least personally don't like that to walk in that temperatures. So now it's just perfect. If it stays like this, it would just be the icing on the cake, of course. It was a quick stop by an ancient Roman bridge next to irrigating fields and canals. 5.3 kilometers to Lorca. Lorca and Villa Tuerta are the final two towns before reaching the river walk route that leads you to Estella. The origins of the town can be traced back to the 11th century when it was established as a settlement for pilgrims journeying to Santiago. As a result of its location near the Ebro River, Estella became a vital hub for trade and commerce during the Middle Ages. What can I say about this gorgeous uh, little town? It's a jewel and I haven't been able to film it as with a nice weather like we have today, clear blue skies, so those drone shots are just incredible. Gonna go ahead and uh, have a bite to eat because lunch was just a little snack. I'm staying at the Municipal at Burge, which is uh, first time for me here in this town. The last couple of times I stayed in uh, private accommodation, so it was nice to try something uh, new. There's a laundry room in there, so I'll be able to do laundry for the first time, wash everything and start fresh uh, tomorrow morning. So it is time to head out and get some extra carbs in my body because I'm, I'm hungry. I'm also a little bit sore. You think I'm not doing a workout here? I'm riding that bicycle. It's nice. I mean, I, I can't complain. I never tried that before and I think I love it. I think from now on I will be mixing more Caminos on bicycles just to try it, to see it in a different light. Tomorrow we're gonna get some red wine from uh, Bodega Irache. We're gonna pass through uh, Los Arcos, Torres del Rio, and we're gonna make it to Logroño. If you're on a Thai budget, then I highly recommend you go for the menu del dia, which is always more food than you bargain for. I started with a uh, carbonara that was incredible, followed by a plate that had chicken, fries, and an egg. I had a pint, and everything came out to be 16 euros way too much food but that's what you bargain for when you go for the menu del dia i think it's time right now to uh, head back to uh, dia Berge, do laundry and pass out from in this uh full coma that i find myself in right now i'm gonna go ahead and skip dinner maybe just have coffee just to have uh, something for my belly for tonight. And uh, after having that nap, I managed to do laundry and it dried on the first cycle, which is something that is unheard of. It only cost me five euros. I gave the bicycle a little scrub down from all the mud that was stuck to it. And I also added a little bit of oil to the chain. So I guess that's it for today's vlog. I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow around seven or maybe eight o'clock. Let the sun be out and not be so damn cold. See you then.